Shalom, shalom. Oh, chair's going down to the dirt. All right. Just gonna be doing a reading to finish the Proverbs um, reading that I've been posting or had posted up on YouTube. And um, I'd started, I believe, on the second day and it's been a while I haven't finished and I wanted to offer even though today is not the first it's the 6th of May um, obviously the Gregorian calendar but I just wanted to offer the the first chapter which is the whole book for me is very <clears throat> sorry for the road noise is very precious um, it's one of the things that my father did instill and point me to were the Proverbs. And he would have me memorize some of the verses on three by five cards as a child. And those, <clears throat> it was actually two of those verses that witnessed against me and cut my heart open to him. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8 and Proverbs 14, 12. Um, and that verse is actually repeated later. I forget the reference, but it's, it appears more than once in the Proverbs. Um, just read them to you guys. I'm going to start with 14.12. And it's a pretty short, simple verse. But it says a lot. Proverbs 14, Mashalai. Chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way right to a man, but its end is the way of death. There is a way right to a man, but its end is the way of death. One more time. There is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs, Mashalai 3, verse 5 through 8. Trust in Yahuwah with all of your heart and do not rely or lean on your own understanding, own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Yahuwah and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear, I would say, fear is what we experience when we're in danger it's uh when a bear is chasing us down and in some senses that's certainly appropriate with the most high but it's really a, i would say a reverence which is love and respect reverence do not be wise in your own eyes revere yahuwah and turn away from evil or lawlessness or wickedness it will be It will be healing to your body, and I believe specifically it says your gut, your navel, which is where our immune system lives, and also refreshment or healing to your bones, marrow to your bones, life to your bones. Those two proverbs I'll come back to, um, but they cut me, cut me deeply. There's a way seems right to a man, but it leads to death. That's a scary thought, that you think you're on the right path. You believe you're on the right path. But in f reality, the path that you're on is leading you to death. And that's actually where, that's where I was. I was that man. And um, when I had fear of being separated from him, fear of being on the wrong path and being beguiled or being deceived or being delusional, um, I cried out to him. And he did show me that I was on 
not only was I on the wrong path, I wasn't even in the same forest. And that was a lot to process. And um, when you have a reality shift that's that extreme, it reverberates through your whole life and it can almost feel or seem like a it could almost seem or feel like a paranoia or a um, even a mild form of psychosis when you really are shaken at your core and your whole concept of reality is challenged and uprooted So let's get into Proverbs 1, and I just wanted to give that backdrop because it's the first chapter, and for me, it's just, I don't know, there's something sacred about it. It's the beginning. And the beginning is such something that's a powerful concept. It's the head. Um, it's our, our beginning, our new beginning is the head of the body, which is Messiah, which is Christ. He's the Resh of Israel, Israel. He's our head. And when we join ourselves to him, we become part of his body. And how to, what we're joining ourselves to is what he already accomplished, which is the Father's will through his word and spirit, his instructions. And that's how we fulfill and bring heaven to earth is through his instructions. That's the recipe. If you want to bake a cake, well, if you want to bring heaven to earth, he gave us the recipe. And then people call it a curse when Psalms 19 says that it brings wisdom to the dull that it's perfect so Proverbs 1 Mashalai 1 1 be it Elaf or also Echad the Proverbs of Shalomah the son of Dud king of Isharel to know wisdom and instruction to discern the sayings of understanding to receive instructions in wise behavior righteousness justice and equity bless you to give prudence to the naive to give guidance to give substance to the foolish to the youth knowledge and discretion a wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. To understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. The reverence of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hear, my son, your father's instruction. Yo, my brother Spencer is over here reading with us too, hanging out. This guy, this guy's a blessing right here. Be praying for him, lift him up. Okay. Um, got that other chair? Did it, is it gone? Yeah. Somebody's snag. Oh, there it is. Um, hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath on your head and ornaments on your neck. My son, if the lawless entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive like shoal, even whole as those who go down to the pit. We will find all of the precious wealth. We will fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot with us. We shall have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your feet from their path. Keep your feet from their path, brother. For their feet run to evil, lawlessness, and they hasten to shed blood. Indeed, it is useless to spread net, the net in the sight of a bird. They lay in wait for their own blood. They ambush their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who gains by violence. It takes away the life of its possessors. Wisdom shouts in the street. She lifts up her voice in the square. At the head of the noisy way, she cries out. 
at the entrance of the gates in the city, she utters her sayings, How long, O naive ones, will you love being simple-minded and scoffers delight themselves in scoffing? Literally taking pride and enjoying trying to correct and tell people they're wrong or that they don't know what they're talking about. Scoffers. And scoffers delight themselves in scoffing and fools hate knowledge. Turn to my reproof, my correction. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. This is Hakama wisdom talking. I will make my words known to you because I called and you refused. I stretched out my hand and no one paid attention. And this is, this is my message. This is my message now to you guys because I did pay attention late, but I did. It is to me as well because every day is a new day. It's a new beginning. It's a process. So I don't, I'm not speaking down. I'm speaking to my brother. I'm also speaking to myself because if we are brothers, we are brothers in him, we are one, Echad. So I just wanted to add that caveat because I am not setting myself up or lifting myself up. It's because of I prayed and asked for these things that he gave it to me. It's not because I had it myself. It was because of his mercy that I have it. His word and his spirit says, I will make my words known to you, but because I called and you refused, stretched out my hand and no one paid attention and you neglected all of my counsel and you did not want my correction or my reproof, I will laugh at your calamity. Wisdom says, I will laugh at your calamity when your dread comes like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then you will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently then, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and they loved scoffing. And they it literally says they hated knowledge. Well, right up here it says, yeah, they did hate knowledge. They also, they, they loved scoffing. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and they did not choose the reverence of Yahuwah. They would not accept my counsel they spurned all of my correction, my reproof, my rebukes, so they shall eat the fruit of their own way. They will eat the fruit of their own way. And they will be filled, satiated with their own devices. That means they won't have room for anything else, guys. They'll be full of themselves. They won't have room for everything else. That's why people, they can't hear or they won't listen because there's no room to receive anything. They already are operating under a false pretense, presumptuousness that they think that they know. They've accepted falsehood and so their whole lives are a false reality. So they eat the fruit of their own way and they will be satiated in their own devices for the waywardness of the naive, the foolishness will kill them and the complacency, complacency of fools, they're relaxed, they don't, it's no big deal. This is why it says in the end days, it's going to be as it was before the flood with Noah, because everybody's going to be eating, drinking, celebrating, with no concern, even though we have sun eclipses, all these signs, we have economy, we have, we, have, we have literally 10 million people invading our country, men of military age without women and children, and no, no men are rushing to go and serve and, and, and literally protect our, our borders. It's, it's a political joke. And people don't see what's coming. For the waywardness of the naive will kill them. The complacency of fools will destroy them. We're more busy watching TV and being on social media than we are like literally taking care of our kids, making sure our kids are learning right, making sure that our politicians, our leaders are representing us right. We're distracted, we're complacent. And the complacency of fools will destroy them. But he who listens to me shall live securely, brother. Live securely. Even though we've been limited, even though we've been reduced to a little place, even though we live out of our vehicles, some of us live out of tents, some of us live out of trailers, some of us live in houses, but we've been reduced. Our women have been taken from us, our children, our families have rejected us. Society looks at us as if we're some, something's wrong with us, that we're broken. 
we've been reduced to a low estate. And gold and silver are tried by fire, but men by adversity. He who listens to me shall live securely and will be at ease. Will be at ease, bro. Of what? Check this out. Will be at ease of what? The dread of evil. Will be at ease. At ease. Where was Lot when Sodom and Gomorrah was being destroyed? He was he was even he said, Don't even turn around and look, keep walking. And guess what? The woman didn't look, didn't listen. She turned and she looked and she turned to a pillar of salt. That's a warning, women. You better listen. Men too. Men too. I'm going to read it last. It's also interesting that there's a 33 verses to the first chapter of Proverbs 33. Three plus three is six. Six is the day of man. Six is the day that we were created. Six is Vav. Six is that which connects. 33, 33 vertebrae in our spine, which connects our head to our hip, our two places of contract, our mouth and our loins. 33, how old the... <laughs> How old the blameless one was when they beat him and killed him and murdered him and traded a murder for him and disowned him when he came and healed the sick and fed the hungry. We had three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right now, one of the burdens of my heart is that there are three generations with my father still being alive, but he's dying and he keeps rejecting the word. He keeps having all these miracle extensions of his life, but he, he's not receiving and acting on these gifts, and I'm afraid for my father. His name is John. I ask you guys to pray for him. He's had so many, so many chances, so many get out of jail free cards, so many deliverances. And I just don't understand when we have that many chances, when we don't take them, how, how those aren't going to be like witnesses against us, that we had those opportunities and we wasted them. That's why I'm fearful for my father. And I see that there's a curse over our house, just like the book says in De Deuteronomy 28. The beautiful thing is, even if we're subjected to those curses in our flesh, that we come into the truth, we're able to still have inner peace. We're still able to give thanks in all things. As 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 Ayuv or Job said, Yahuwah gives, Yahuwah takes, but blessed is Yahuwah. Hallelujah, blessed is Yahuwah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's all, I love you guys.